Hello Town fans and welcome to the official FC Halifax Town YouTube channel. I'm Callum Jones here at the Shea Stadium. I'm going to have a chat with Kevin Allsgrove to see how he's adapting to life in Halifax. Kevin, welcome to Shea and Player. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, hopefully this will give the uh, fans a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Um, so first of all, let's start with um, football. Uh, from Birkenhead originally. Um, so it's a big football part of the country. Um, I imagine you grew up supporting one of the Merseyside clubs. Did that have a big influence on you growing up as a wanting to be a footballer? Um, yeah, well, I grew up supporting Everton, got picked up from out by Everton when I was about eight or nine. So yeah, I was playing from the age of eight up until now really. So yeah, I was always playing football. And a lot of kids obviously yeah. in the Liverpool area do play football. Is it, um, I imagine you spent um, a few Saturdays at, at Goodison Park watching. Um, are there any games from your childhood that stick in your, your head as, as some of the, the best that you've ever seen? Um, I, I used to go with my uncle a bit and I remember a Arsenal game when 2-1 um, it was and yeah that's pro probably one of the main ones that stick but obviously as you get older you can't go to the games of Saturday because you've got games so yeah that's probably one of the main ones that sticks in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that you uh, you spent time with Everton on the books and then um, went to a few different clubs. Um, I did read the other day that when you're at Boston United, you had to basically give give up the side because it was um, an eight hour commute there and back. Um, uh, I don't think it was that much, but yeah, it was a lot, just got too much in the end. So I just you know I'd agreed with the manager when it signed that if it did become too much, you know he'd just let me go because it was under contract, and which he did, and yeah, so. Do you think that that's a, a good example um, to the people that think that football is is often glamorous, that it, it's not always the case? Oh, well, yeah, I'm guessing so, you know. It's good to look at this level to have, I'm guessing, a ground like this and the setup like you do at Halifax. It's not like that everywhere, you know. Like Our local team was box all at the round this level, like you said. You know of living in Ellesmere Port and, you know, it's nothing like this, but still good players, good set of lads, yeah. You've yeah. been around a number of clubs in your career so far. Um, I, I must admit, I did have a little look on the internet um, in all these these fan forums, the non-league forums, um, and obviously you get um, some some interesting things said about everyone. Um, I just want to tell you a line that I saw that based on you. Someone said this, Kevin Holsgrove is on his day unplayable. Um, he has bags of talent, he's strong and he's pacey. With with reviews like that, do you think why do you think it has been that you've not been able to settle and, and spend a long time at a club so far in your career? Um, I don't know. I think just this level, it's generally you, you just sign up a team for one year and then just depending on what happens the next year, obviously squads are chop, chopping and changing all the time, and that just seems to be the way it's worked out really. Yeah. Like as in last year, I probably would have stayed at Guysley if it, they'd come up, but you know Halifax had come up and they spoke to me and. I thought it was a, better, a good opportunity to play at a higher level. So you mentioned that you arrived from Garsley in the summer um, alongside Josh Wilson, um, who I take it is a good friend of yours. Did that help your integration in the squad arriving with with someone that you know really well? Um, yeah, well, it did obviously because I know Josh. I played with Josh a few times now, but I knew quite a few of the other lads anyway, just from you know playing with them, playing against them. And yeah, it was easy. A good set of lads, so it was always easy to. Settled in really. And obviously guys the last year, guys in Halifax were quite big rivals um, across league and cups. Obviously uh, Halifax beat Guysley to promotion from the Blue Square yeah. North and also won the um, West Cap Riding County Cup final against Guysley. Was it a little bit strange for you coming from that, that rivalry onto the other side or, or d as players do you not really kind of take much notice of that? Um, I see what you're saying, probably more you're thinking the fans are thinking you know, you come here went with guys and you get obviously abuse off the, the away fans. But to be fair, I was, was banned for both legs of the playoffs and for the County Cup final. So <laughs> I didn't really get to play in any of them games. So, yeah. You started your Halifax career really quite well, um, scoring three games back to back. Um, until the, the Salisbury City game, um, where you were dismissed in the first half. Do you think it's fair to say that that has somewhat halted your progress here? Um, yeah, possibly. I've, after getting sent off, missed a few games and you know the lads were doing well so I wasn't expecting to come back in and I'm guessing maybe missing a few games you lose a bit of match fitness etc and yeah I've struggled to get back in the side but yeah you've just got to keep working haven't you and hopefully get your chance you take it. You've been around non-league football for the last six, seven years kind of thing. Um, 
as a striker, you've scored a few goals. Um, I've seen a few actually on YouTube. Uh, it was a back heel again, uh, whilst playing for Vauxhall. I don't know if you remember these. Um, and then one, one last year against Brackley, I think it was, uh, where you lobbed the... Um, what do you think is the best goal you've ever scored? Can you, can you remember one that really sticks out? To be honest, recently, the lads say the goal against Geisley, in the one we had, we had a behind closed doors game recently, for some of the lads who hadn't played must get fit, and some of the lads said it was the best goal they'd ever seen, so I'm guessing that's what it <laughs> to be. <Yeah. laughs> one you scored, I remember here, against Southport in the league. Um, yeah. A very close game. It was nil nil for a long time until you scored. I remember at the time Neil Aspin said it was it was a fantastic goal. Um, how does that rank in the in the goals that you've scored? Um, well, guessing the timing because it was quite late on in the game. Yeah, it was uh, good to get three points and obviously being new to Halifax, only being probably about the fourth or fifth game. You know, to score the goal that wins the game. Yeah, it's pretty. I'm guessing it's pretty important. We go back to last Monday. Um, at Harrogate Railway where we played uh, in the West Riding County Cup you started at left back in that game yeah. I don't think you've, you've probably not played there many times in your career have you how did you find that no, uh, that's okay I'm guessing a few of the young lads are playing for the gaffer obviously Josh was playing centre half as well so the gaffer <laughs> just wanted us to do a job and get some fitness and yeah you had to just get, get out of it what you could really yeah this you've joined a real well, what seems from the outside a really close-knit squad um you know, we, we obviously as the media team see um, things that other people do and it's always, you know, everyone having a laugh and, yeah. and it really does seem tight. Um, in that change room, what, what does this squad think that they can achieve this season? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say what we, we don't know what we can achieve, but I think coming into the league, I'm guessing fans and probably people around the club were hoping, you know, just to stay up. But as we've seen from this league, we've beaten Grimsby come here, we beat them 4-0. You know, they how are they doing now? They're up there in the league, and we're only a few points off playoffs. So, put a few few uh, results together in this league, and you're right up there, aren't you? Because everyone beats everybody. Yeah. Okay. Can you kind of dispel the myth here? What is it about this place that that really unsettles teams? Because they they just can't seem to win here. What is it? Do you, do you do the squad know? I don't know. I don't know. It's strange, and it's hard to it's hard to say really. The pitch is quite big, I'm guessing. So teams will come here, and you know, there's a bit more running, and we've got a lot of athletic lads I'm guessing who will you know get in your face and I'm guessing teams just don't like it and creates results for a team and in contrast still without a, le a legal way win this season mm. it, it, it's unusual isn't it but but I'm sure that there must be a lot of confidence in the in the squad that, that that's going to change and, and there might well be a run where they don't stop winning on the road yeah yeah um, I'm guessing we've been quite unlucky I th thought we were doing okay against uh, Cambridge who were up top of the league aren't they and until we got two men sent off and still we didn't look like you know they were going to score seven well they did go on to score five I think but you know we still did give a good account of ourselves then Salisbury who were up there away was that so it was Salisbury yeah. we got sent off and you know I thought even with nine men we kept the ball well and played well got beat by them and they're up there so I just think sometimes it can like at the Shea now where we're not losing. It's sometimes teams go on these runs, don't they? And away, maybe it's a bit of a mental block that we don't know about that we just can't quite get over the finishing line. Sometimes I'm not sure, but uh, I'm sure it'll come soon. As we beat Nuneaton away in the cup, which and they were up there until very recently, weren't they? So there's a few characters in that change room, isn't there? Um, just a couple of questions. Who's the loudest? Would you say in the dressing room, the most vocal? Um, the most vocal. He probably doesn't. Sp speak the most often but when he does Matty Pearson seems to just shout <laughs> even don't even know mean English stuff just he's a scary man loudly. isn't he yeah I heard someone in the crowd calling him caveman <laughs> and uh, yeah it's probably quite suitable to the way he acts sometimes the way he goes down he just gets straight back up like a zombie doesn't he who do you th who would you say likes to think they're the funny guy in the in the Halifax change room um, the funny guy I, know, not, I wouldn't say there's anyone who thinks they're a funny guy. Last time I was here, it was probably Danny Holland. There's no one really like him now. Like everyone just seems to get on well. And yeah. What about is is there anyone who's particularly smart who you see as as someone who really knows the stuff? Yeah, intelligent. I um, don't know. It's not really a. I don't think people really see foot, anyone who plays football as intelligent, do they? But um, I'm not sure really. It's. Um, 
guessing one of the older guys, like Phil's a teacher. Does he like to think that he's the uh, he's the he's the smart guy then? Um, I don't know. He does, I don't know whether he thinks he does, but I'm just <laughs> guessing they're probably one of the more intelligent. Say Matt, Matty Glennon's and one of the older what he's hairdresser, isn't he? So who's, who's the most likely to forget the boots on match day? Um, most likely to forget the boots. I don't know. Most of the lads give them to Halley and he just brings them. So probably ha is it, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, um, just before this game, um, Marshy and. Um, Scott McManus both had their boots missing they were left on the coach so I'm guessing one of them too <laughs> and uh, and finally who would you say has the worst music taste um, well we only get to listen to Marshy's Marshy's the uh, DJ on away trips on the coach and in the changing room so but to be fair like I like the music he listens to so but we have, we have no choice of that's does he his, take that's his job yeah. does he take requests um, yeah he does yeah he gives some people a little go sometimes he plays some songs that like the older guys, like Matty Glennon, don't like. So, yeah, it's always a lot. It's always a laugh and something like that coming. Kevin, thanks for joining us tonight, um, and the best luck for the rest of the season.